Hi, good day, everyone, uh, and welcome to the uh, M&A Alliance CEO Forum. Uh, this is Kyle Griffith of the M&A Alliance, uh, one of the management partners of the MYBB Group and founder of the M&A Alliance. I hope everyone is doing well under the circumstances. Uh, this is some interesting times um, that we're in right now. Um, today, we're going to be having a fireside discussion about leadership through crisis. Um, there's been lots of conversation about COVID-19 and various finance and options that are available as it relates to the CARES Act and SBA funding. However, in this webinar, we're going to focus on the challenges that CEOs and leaders face during a crisis. As a leader of an organization, you, know, you have the responsibility of the success of your company and your employees. They, they turn to you for direction and leadership, especially during these times. Uh, today, we have an, an expert panel that's going to be giving their insights into leadership. We also have a special guest today that's going to be sharing their realized perspective about how they ran their company and how they overcome challenges in their business. Um, so we're just excited for our, our, our webinar today. Um, just some housekeeping notes. Um, there's a panel on the left where you can enter your questions. Uh, we're going to save the Q&A for uh, the tail end of this webinar. Um, however, you're welcome to insert your questions, and we will will be monitoring the chat as as we go along today. Okay, so what's what's the MLA Alliance? Okay, the MLA Alliance is comprised of an exclusive group of elite and trusted business and management consultants that advise and educate companies seeking either a growth or an exit strategy. What does that mean? Um, as a CEO of a, of a growing company, you're either looking to grow your business, or at some point you may be looking to exit. Um, hopefully you have a trusted team of advisors that help you and educate you and give you pointers as far as you know how, what direction you need to take your company in. Uh, we at the M&A Alliance, we provide those services for, for CEOs of lower to middle market companies. Uh, they see us as their trusted advisors as they, and support them throughout their process and transition. Uh, today, uh, we have uh, three uh, members of the M&A Alliance today. Um, that's going to be giving their feedback. They all are experts on leadership. Um, we have Kevin Claus. He's founder and owner of Claus Coaching and Consulting. Uh, we have Winnie Benjamin, founder of Stewart Tips Masters International. And Susan Gans, founder and strategic advisor of Gans Strategic Solutions. Um, they have a lot of accolades as far as their background. Um, they've been in business for a long time. Um, you know, this is their forte. Leadership is their strong suits. Um, as you can see from the slideshow, um, Kevin is an executive and career coach. Um, he's a leadership development consultant, and he's a, a good friend of mine and member of the group. He has a lot of experience in leadership. He has hosted multiple workshops um, on the topic. So I'm sure you're going to be happy to what Kevin has to um, discuss today. And, and as far as his feedback and his insights on, on leadership, uh, we also have uh, Winnie Benjamin. Okay. She's a well sought after speaker and she helps companies create their secret source, right? Winnie, so we're going to hear about what that secret source is. Uh, she's an advisory board member of the Merchant Association of Rosedale, Laurenton, and Springfield Gardens. She also has other, you know, leadership positions in other areas, including uh, being a board of director for the Maratna, if I'm, if I'm saying that correct, Winnie, Maratna Human Services um, in Poughkeepsie, New York, as well as um, she's also a founding member of um, uh, of the John, John Maxwell leadership team. Okay, she's a certified coach with John Maxwell. I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with John Maxwell. Um, finally, we have um, Susan Gans. She's a strategic advisor. Uh, she helps companies develop and execute key strategic initiatives to improve their productivity and profitability. Um, she's also host and she also hosts a, a, a web series called Rest, which I'm sure she's going to talk about today. Um, she's a, a regional and community leader. She's heavily involved in the Melville, Melville Chamber of Commerce, as well as other institutes. Um, and she also holds a, a BS from Tufts University and an MBA from Wharton School. So. Um, can you guys hear me loud and clear as my panel? You guys are ready? It's ready to rock, ready to go? Yes, ready to go. Okay, thank you guys so much for you know participating. You know, this is going to be a conversation, okay? Um, we're going to be going back and forth. Um, it's just going to be an op open discussion. Uh, so we have like four topics today that we're going to be um, discussing. Um, the first topic is going to be on pitfalls. Um, that leaders should avoid. And we're going to be talking about self-care as well as best practices and so on. Um, we, we do have a special guest today. 
Um, um, so uh, halfway through this 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 webinar, we will be bringing Robert on from Zog Sports. So we're happy to have him join us. And um, any questions you have for the, the panel or Rob, you know, as I mentioned before, please, um, you know, post that into the chat. So we're going to kick it off today. And, um, you know, what, one of the questions I have, which is the lead question for, for our panel today, you know, can you share with us? And Susan, I'll, be, I'll start with you if it's okay. You know, yeah. what are some pitfalls that leaders can avoid during a crisis? And I just want to, I just want to frame this, right? So most of the conversation has been around financing. Right. Companies want to survive. They want to keep their business going. But with, with that being said, there's a whole emotional aspect to this. And how do you lead your team? And, you know, most business owners are in a bubble. You know, they have limited people they can turn to. Right. Most most of them, they're really good at what they do, but they still need some some direction. And sometimes they may not seek out advice uh, in certain cases. But as far as pitfalls that we can advise CEOs, and leaders to avoid during these times, you know, what are some pitfalls you can um, suggest or what are some pitfalls they could avoid during a crisis like we're in right now with COVID-19? So thank you, Kyle, for hosting this and to my fellow panelists and to the attendees. And it is important, as Kyle mentioned, that there are such a range of emotions that are going on right now that not rec by not recognizing that, it, the, the true human impact, that's where I see uh, CEOs going into pitfall mode in terms of going into fear and panic. And when you go into fear and panic, you can't access your creativity and innovation and be there and present for your team. And some people say, well, I'm going to just go dark and they're not showing up as leaders. And um, I can recall with one of my organizations, and they said, well, I guess we won't be doing events for the next few months. I stepped in and I said, we are going to do events. They will be virtual events. We can't go dark. We have to deliver value to our membership, which is our clientele. You know, and, and some people go are in the phase of anger and negativity. So that anger and negativity, that energy will flow to their employees and to their clients and their family. So that, you know, tactic of just surviving and focusing on the uh, survival is not enough. So it's about how can you see the recognize and acknowledge the fear but also seek the broader picture. You know, what are going to be po potential opportunities and scenarios to be successful going forward? And very importantly, and it, it's easy to feel this way now, is to feel like you're all alone, right? Because as most of us are in physical isolation, some of us forget that we have this broader support system of colleagues our families, the business community, and the community at large. And that's where I see organizations like the M&A Alliance as, as a trusted group of experts that can provide and have that uh, support and navigating through these difficult times. Okay, thank you, Susan. Um, okay, Kevin, do you, you have anything to add? Uh yeah, a couple of things, Kyle. One thing that I would say is it's really important to be transparent at this point. So I would avoid withholding information from your employees. Um, share what you can. Recognize those things that you may not be able to share. Call out the elephant in the room and address things head on. Because if you're withholding information, people are going to start to make up their own reality. So I think it's really important to be aware of that. Um not providing your team with a vision, you know, but people are likely going to have to pivot at this point and rethink the way that they do business. So provide a vision to your team, give them something to follow. And another thing is um, is recognition. So don't uh, don't uh, forget about recognizing the people in your organization who are stepping up and going above and beyond right now, and call them out for the great work that they're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, awesome, awesome tips there, Kevin. Um, Winnie, what about yourself? Anything you'd like to share with the group? Um, uh, my colleagues did a great um, uh, uh, job. I just wanted to 
emphasize the importance of actively listening to everyone in the organization because at times when leaders panic, they shut out the advice of their their staff. You know, I got this, I got this, I got this. And that can really destroy their forward move because the teams will just relax and not participate, Make and that makes it worse. So it is critical at this time that they're doing more active listening to every single person in the organization. Doesn't mean that they're taking on all of the advice, but they have listened to everything and then make a decision based on their own moral values. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I think I'm gonna move on to the next, 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 next point that we have here to discuss. Um, I think self-care, just, I think about maintaining relationship with employees and customers is key. Um, so I, I give you w- one personal experience that I've had. So uh, most, most CPAs are, are inundated, right? Right now they're helping their clients with PPP applications and you know, preparing financial statements. Uh, my personal CPA that handles my business and personal taxes just went AWOL for like three weeks. And in these times, it's something you don't really want to do, quite frankly. Um, yeah, f- forget about me filing any, any paperwork. I need to know, you know it's okay, first of all, right? Um, you know, you're hearing a lot of folks that are with us today and, and, and going tomorrow. Um, he, Thank God he called me uh, uh, two days ago and said he's just been busy and he just shut down up in his business and took his voicemail off because he's just too busy um, with clients. But I think you need to have a clear message into your customers. Number one, you, you are still in business. You are there still to serve them. And your, your employees as well need direction, right? A lot of them are working from home right now. You know, so, um, you know, can, can you share with, um, with the attendees here for a webinar today some tips on, you know, maintaining, developing relationships with employees and, and customers? And um, Kevin, I'll have you uh, take the first, first crack at this. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. So first of all, if you're new to working remotely, turn on your video camera whenever possible. It helps make connections. Uh, you can see body language, facial expressions. I've worked remotely for probably 13 or 14 years now. So it's kind of second nature to me, but I know it's new to a lot of people, but it really does make a difference in terms of being able to make that personal connection with people. Uh, And nobody cares how you look or what clothing you're wearing. So don't worry about those aspects of it. Uh, We, uh, Susan addressed this a little bit uh, before about visibility, being visible with your team. And what I mean by that is don't be an absent leader, similar to what Susan was saying, Checking in not only on assignments, but check in frequently on how people are doing with that personal touch, see how they're doing, see how their their, uh, families are doing, uh, and really listen. Listen to what they're saying and and let them be heard. Uh, Really important to show that you support them. And um, if you show compassion and empathy in this way, people are going to remember how you treated them, how their leader treated them during the crisis. Uh, So, you know, think about... uh, when you've experienced challenges or trauma in the past. And I'll bet you remember the people who stepped up and who helped you and provided support. And you can probably recall too, some of the people who maybe didn't step up or were more absent. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, Delegate power. Another thing that's really important is delegating power to every single person. So letting people take ownership of something, it gives them, it, it takes away that feeling of powerlessness that they may be feeling right now. So don't try to solve everything yourself. Give them a sense of purpose. People want to feel like they're needed and that they're contributing to the greater good. Those are a few of the, the first things that come to mind. Yeah, I, I think definitely reach out to your employees and just get a, get a feel for how they operate and out of the office. Um, kids are home, right? You have kids at home, my kids are home, you have everyone has kids home and um, you have working parents, a lot going on in the household. So I, I think definitely reaching out to your employees is to see how they manage in their work life uh, away and outside of the office. Um, Winnie, you, you mind sharing on how you advise your clients um, to deal with this very fluid situation as new laws and guidelines are coming out on a daily basis? Um, what, what can you share as far as advising your clients based upon what, what we're dealing with in, in these times? Okay, so um, this is, oh, I'm sorry, I just have a little glitch here. Um, yeah, so what I re- basically uh, would recommend is communicate, communicate, communicate. You cannot 
over communicate. It's very important that um, basically when you're advising your clients, like for example, uh, if this is the business owners we are speaking to and they're basically working with their clients in that context as well, uh, or it's, it's important that they know what's going on. Uh, you don't want to lose your client base at this point. You really don't. So you want to make sure that your team is in alignment, that they are staying focused, and that the team, um, I'm stating that uh, your lawyer, your CPA, your financial uh, advisor, those are your trusted team because as information moving fast, you be, you, know, you now have the steering wheel you have to focus on what happens after the, death, the, the dust settles and also all the way to the end of the year into 2021, the economic downturn and how am I shifting? How am I using my statements, my values, my vision, my whys? I'm in business, communicating that uh, to my team. And as you mentioned about the secret sauce, Understanding that this is a level playing field and everyone, when the gun goes off, go back, start doing business, edges on. And so you need to focus on operations, making sure that every single employee is working in a role of their giftedness. That's critical at this point to manage your resources. You may have somebody who were hired with a degree, let's say, in accounting, and they're doing fine in accounting, but that's not their that's not their passion. That's not what they're great at. You'll be surprised that they're good at creative ideas, and so you want to move them to the creative department. So work on your operations, the effectiveness, the efficiency, making sure the customer link in your company is tight. And as Kevin uh, mentioned earlier, how you make them feel that's important. So just focus on the day to day. You may, not, especially if you're a small business owner, you might definitely be the COO. But if you're mid market, you will probably have a COO. You and the COO must make sure that you are in alignment while your trusted advisors are keeping you in compliance so that you can navigate and move forward. Thank you, Winnie. And it's funny, in these times, you know, there's actually, prior to COVID, there's a lack of talent, right? A lot of people have well-paying jobs and the economy is doing well. Now may be a good time to evaluate the talent you have, you know, you know focus on your A and your, your B yes. quality employees and, and, and actually swap out the Cs and the B minuses with A's and B's, right? There are That's people right. out there that are you know, looking for opportunities and now would be a good time to, if you have someone that's in the, in the wrong seat, you know, put them in a different role and find yeah. sources to fulfill that, that key position. Uh, would you say that's, 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 that's true, Susan? Yes, absolutely. It's about, you know, being in tune and in touch where people are at um, with their skill set, but also emotionally where they're at. And I love what my fellow panelists said about communicating and over communicating mm -hmm. thank you uh <laughs> we're going to move on to the uh, self-care and it's important right uh, so we all are home right <laughs> for the most part and um now your exercises from your your bedroom to your bathroom to your bed to your home office or wherever you set up shop so to speak at your home um, a lot of folks are not exercising uh now you have to stress of working in an environment you probably have not worked in, you know, you're not, you know, not used to working. You have employees that have may have stress as well, and and the end have to deal with um, working from home and family life and all of the interferences that can come about. Um, but more specifically for for CEOs, okay, because without the company, there's no employees, right? So most importantly, we have to keep the company afloat and make sure that the culture everything is in sync so to speak, and everyone kind of understands what the what the next what the process is. But for the CEO specifically, you know, Kevin, can you talk about the lead? Can you talk about the importance of self-care for owners and 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 their employees? 
Yeah, sure, Kyle. Thanks. So one of the most important things related to self-care and something I talk with my clients about all the time is this idea of energy management. You hear a lot about time management, work-life balance, uh, but I like to look at it from an energy perspective. Time is a finite resource. There are only 24 hours in the day. Energy, however, is infinite. It's something that you can constantly renew. You just need to make it a priority. And I think that's where many of us fall short. So if you think about your personal energy as sort of like your gas tank, as with the gas tank in your car, you can't keep going without refueling regularly. And it's always best uh, you know, to not wait until you're approaching empty or, or approaching that level of burnout. You want to keep it topped off and, and keep your, your gas tank full. And I find that leaders and business owners, CEOs often struggle with stepping away uh, and turning things off. Um, to focus on their own self-care. So be sure to take the necessary time to really re-energize uh, because I, you know, I find that typically the mindset is I've got to get so much done. Uh, I'm going to just you know, keep going and I'm going to get through this now and then there'll be time for the other stuff later. When in reality, research shows that if you can take short breaks to re-energize and do it regularly, you'll get more done in less time You'll approach your work with a clearer head. You'll be able to solve problems more effectively. Uh, and as you feel yourself slipping away and, and not feel, feeling like you're not fully energized, you're entering into this other area where you need to replenish, know what it's going to take for you to refuel. For some people, it might be uh, physical activity like running, walking, uh, some type of exercise. For others, it might be yoga, meditation, mindfulness, or reading a book, something like that. Um, so whatever it is for you, identify what helps you re-energize, schedule that time in your calendar so that you can do it regularly and really make it a priority. Um, so as, as a leader, begin with your own self-care so that you can fully support your team and then model that behavior that you want to see from your team. And then have an open conversation with them about the importance of self-care, about this idea of energy management and share with them what you're doing and by having this open conversation, it'll create opportunities to bond over shared interests. So just a, a quick example, one of the things that I love to do is cook. In addition to liking to eat good food, I... Uh, <laughs> What's for lunch it today? Relaxes <laughs> it relaxes me. And I, it, it's just something that I really love to do. And when I was leading a global remote team several years ago, we had this very conversation. I did a one hour workshop with them where we talked about this idea of energy management. We all shared what we love to do. And I talked about cooking and it created this shared bond throughout the group. And we started sharing recipes and, and sending each other pictures of our dishes. We don't work together anymore, but we still share this passion to this day. And we keep in touch and we still talk about it regularly. So there's a, a tremendous opportunity there to create some strong bonds, strong and lasting bonds within your team. Um, and in the example that I just shared, what it did it was it, it helped us to form deeper personal relationships and that impacted our business relationships significantly. We communicated better. Uh, we had a strong sense of teamwork. We cared about one another. The quality of the work coming out of the team was better and more efficient. So there are real business benefits to this type of approach. So start the dialogue with your team, start with yourself first, then start that dialogue with your team. Awesome, great points. Winnie, um, briefly, any any, 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 any additions you want, you want to add to uh, what, what Kevin has stated? Uh, I add? Yes, I, I find out, especially when you're saying the actual CEO uh, on their level of stress, it's always easier said than done, even for myself. Uh, having a background in the area of wellness as a wellness practitioner myself, uh, I know what to do. But at times when the demands are high, I tend to skip. And for that reason, in order for me to stay on track, I have to engage. I do have quite a few coaches, believe me, that I'm investing in, one of them being a life coach, and I can get a text message where the alarm goes off, a phone call comes in. Uh, we agreed that you'll be up at 6.30 this morning. You're going to do your stretching. You know, remember, you're going to be doing shakes this morning. You know, just having an accountability partner in a life coach. And at best, um, if not, some people just don't want a human being aggravating them, then you can program your computers. We have a number of, uh, of softwares now that's on your desktop, on your computers that could actually ping you, 
send, you know, little memes. However, that's really <laughs> not fading. And even the smart watches, even the smart watches can uh, help you there too. So you can depend on some form of assistance because when you're focusing on deadline, when you're focusing on moving forward and steering, you're human. You know you're supposed to, but you're just not getting it done. So you have to depend on technology, which is the cheapest. And if you're a person that's more heart, a heart, then you engage a life coach. Awesome. Awesome, Winnie. Um, I, I think to the, very, the best part of this panel, and thank you, Rob. I'm glad you could join us. Um, we will introduce Rob in a second. We're glad he's able to make it on to the webinar today. And um, the, the, the following uh, questions we have here, it's all based upon best practices. Okay. Um, and this is for the in, entire panel. You guys are welcome to chime in, anyone. Um, you know, if you mind sharing uh, with the group some tips and best practices that you have worked, that have worked for you and your clients, if you might like to share with everyone in attendance today. Kyle, I'll jump in here. Uh, I think importantly, what you've been hearing as a thematic here is to show up and be visible as often as possible. And, you know, in these times, things are so fluid and it's, it's okay not to get it perfect, just to be authentic and real and to really um, be mindful of the emotions that people are going through and that people are, have two primary human needs now around certainty and around connection. And the more that you can provide structure and guidance and your leadership, that will provide the certainty for them. And just to, to be flexible in how you think. Uh, because things are so fluid and that's where your broader team of um, people, your your personal board of directors, your finance person, your accounting person, your uh, strategy person, your coaches can really help support you and you don't have to go it alone. So I'll, I'll leave it over to my panelists to, to add their best practices. Uh, I'll say that um, the focus is on the team, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, make sure that you identify your A player. At times in this times of crisis, your A player, the ones whose focus is impact, they like to know that they can leave their footprint um, on this company and build their resume by saying, you know, when we had the COVID-19, I was with this company, and this was their situation, and I was I was able to innovate and uh, come up with new strategies and programs that actually propel this company forward. That's your A player. And so at this point, you're looking for that team. You're going to identify them, bring them forward, and making sure, as Susan rightfully said, do they have the statements down pack? The why you're in business, the values, most importantly, your values got to be all over. It has to be clear. The compelling vision is clear and you set your staff loose. Just set them loose. They're A players. Set them loose. They're going to innovate. They are vested. Their reputation is at stake. They want to be able to go back and have this badge. Look what I contributed. Just trust the, the process with them. Uh, check in on them uh, uh, and, and encourage them. Give them thumbs up as they're going. That encourages them a lot. And um, that's really one of the best practices that I've seen that uh, leaders have done in being able to move their business forward and out of the competitive dust. Awesome. When you just got some thumbs up from uh, from the audience just now, so you did a great, <laughs> great response there. You got some round of applause and thumbs up, thumbs up and all that. So awesome job. Uh, Kevin, anything else to add? Yeah. So as I was thinking about today's session, I I looked back at some research that I've used in programs in the past. I was reminded of, of uh, a study that was done by Gallup, where they pulled, I think it was about 10,000 people, and they asked them to talk about the characteristics or traits of leaders, the, uh, the most effective leaders that they've experienced in their career. And I was reminded that these things are still so critical right now, even more important. And what they took the, all this research and they boiled it down to four words, trust, compassion, stability, and hope. And all those things are so critical right now. In terms of trust, 
communicating openly, do what you say you're going to do, be vulnerable with your team, let them see your human side. Um, compassion, check in with them on a regular basis, see how they're doing personally, not just as it relates to work. Stability, things are, are changing so rapidly um, it, that it's so critical right now to ensure that people know exactly what's expected of them today. What, what does success look like for their role today? Because it may be different than what it was yesterday, and it may be different from what it's going to be tomorrow. Um, and then lastly, hope. Having that vision for the future for your organization, share it with your team. Um, even though we don't know exactly what the future holds right now, create and share your vision, if it is necessary, communicate what's happening along the way and celebrate any of the wins that you have along the way. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, Susan, I, I give you the, the, not the final word, I, I give Rob the final word in this, but before I introduce Rob, uh, Susan, uh, any res resources um, that you want to share with the group that can be useful, uh, you know, for someone in, in these times as far as best practices is concerned? Yeah, I think there's a number of, of resources that people can turn to. First of all, there's technological resources like webinar technology, Zoom, WhatsApp, whatever your preferred platform is. And there's the professional and industry associations, things like your chambers of commerce, your small business development centers, your the scores um, can help as well. And look to us too as a resource as the M&A Alliance uh, can provide you the sources as well. Thank you, Susan. Uh, appreciate that. Um, so <clears throat> with, as far as ML Alliance is concerned, we definitely can be a, a huge resource. We have experts in different fields from finance to legal, like accounting, um, M&A advisors, and so on, it's business strategists that can help. So you definitely want to check our website. Then there's some of our members of profiles up there. You're welcome to see if there's anyone there that, that can help you in, 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 in your business. Um, so the moment of the day. And, you know, Robert, I really appreciate you, you know, taking the time to attend. We want to give give a real world, real life perspective on what's going on. Uh, we all, Kevin, Winnie, Susan, myself, we all are, we all, we are, we're all are business owners. We are service providers, but you are a true philanthropist, CEO of a, you know, a large company, uh, one of the leading actually, you know, sports communities in, in the U.S., um, I would, I would add, um, and it's, I don't want to take your thunder away, Rob, but um, I know you went through some <laughs> challenges from between 9-11 and the launch of, of Zog Culture, which I'm sure you're going to ex expand upon. But um, I, I like what you shared here with us from Cranes, you know, best place to work. You know, um, several times you were listed as a prestigious corporation, best for the world community award. I mean, that's pretty out outstanding. You know, um, so I really appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you for your time. Uh, I know you were a great friend of Susan's. You're both uh, 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 alumni of, of Wharton. Um, so, you know, thank you for your time today. And Rob, I introduce you to the m and Alliance CEO firm. Thank you, for, thank you for being here with us. Thanks so much, Kyle. I really appreciate it. Um, thank, thanks for your applause, Winnie. Um, <laughs> um, Susan, 27 years uh, we've known each other. Uh, that's a long time. Oh, gosh. Um, um, I won't make us feel old, um, but when Susan first met me, I had way more hair. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I look at the opportunity to speak to this um, this group, and and my theme is crisis to crisis to crisis. So when I, 2001, I, I'll give you the backstory of how I started the company. 2001, I had uh, recently shut down um, an internet company I was helping run. I had gotten a job as the VP of operations of Martian McLennan's internet group. My office was on the 96th floor of the World Trade Center North Tower, and I was five minutes late to work. And uh, I came around the corner and I heard a noise and I looked up and I saw a gaping hole in the side of the building right where my office had been after the first plane on September 11th directly hit my office. So None of the people from my company, 297 people, none of the people survived. So I hmm. basically had all of my survivor's guilt and I had all of my, um, you know, I had all of my, you know, misgivings about, um, you know, kind of what am I supposed to do now? And uh, I basically was sitting on a beach about four months later, feeling very sorry for myself, thinking, 
um, what a bad year I'd had. I closed down this internet company I was helping run. It was a PayPal competitor. Um, they won, we lost. Um, I was unemployed for four months. I got a job I didn't particularly like and then 9-11 happened. And I thought, well, that's a really terrible year. And then I thought, I looked at my glass, uh, which was a pina colada, by the way, and um, it was exactly half full. And I started to laugh and I looked wow. up at the sky and I said, OK, you, um, I accept your challenge. Uh, glass half full. What are the good things that happened this year? And they were I met my now wife of uh, 17 plus years uh, playing co-ed softball. I had stopped awesome. traveling for work. Uh, I'm a reformed management consultant. In addition to being uh, an internet entrepreneur and, and now having started my own business, I had stopped traveling for work and I started playing recreational sports again. I'd forgotten how much I love the camaraderie of being on a team. And uh, I played in all these other leagues and they were just terribly organized, poor customer service, poor sportsmanship. And I thought, well, I can do that better. And then I saw all these people being incredibly altruistic. And the people who... You know, I said, OK, what are the things that people want to do anyway that I can incorporate this kind of social action into? And I was like, OK, well, they want to feel like they're part of a community. They want to feel like they have real personal connections. They want to play team sports. And uh, I'm going to go and start uh, a company that does that. So within so September of 2002, I launched 500 people showed up. I looked at my looked in the mirror and I said, uh, what have I done? And uh, now we have 125, 150,000 people playing in our leagues in six cities. Um, we've expanded. Uh, so basically what we do is we're recreational sports leagues for grownups. Mm -hmm. So it's little league for grownups with a big charity component. So there's a, a, a program that we have called Play for Your Cause. All the teams that play in our league select a charity that they play for. Most of our sports are, are co-ed. But everything we do, which will get us from crisis to crisis to crisis, everything we do is a public gathering. So mm -hmm. um, I'll get to that in just one second. Um, so it's a, it's a wonderful business that we basically help people make friends and connect with each other. And to me, like, it, you know, one of the drivers of happiness is connectedness. And the fact that I found a job and a purpose in life where it's about community and connectedness, to me, I, I can think of no greater purpose in life. Uh, and, and it's the purpose that I've, you know, I mean, Susan, Susan will know this, like that's basically what I did back in, back in school. I was kind of a connector. I like, you know, helped people meet each other and continue to do this, which is why I think Susan thought of me for this, you know, this great panel. Um, and, um, you know, we decided about, uh, about eight years ago, we started getting some phone calls. I'll, I'll go on to the second business, then I'll talk about the crisis. Um, the second business, we started getting phone calls from our corporate clients, people who were playing, had corporate teams playing volleyball, basketball, soccer, touch football, whatever it was in our leagues. And they said, hey, can you run X event for us? And we started saying yes. And we realized that that was a separate business to actually help create connections, community, and a sense of play at work. And um, that concept, and you know, the panelists all spoke about this earlier, helping people feel connected in person when even before this crisis, so many people were working remotely. That was one of the big reasons why they would have these big uh, events that we would run. So we would run field days and in-office team building and um, interactive holiday parties and you know, scavenger hunts and quiz nights and all kinds of things like that. So we created the second business called Zog Culture, and that's all that that business did. And we ran, you know, about 100 events last year for 25, 30,000 people. And uh, again, it was how do you actually help people feel connected when they're on remote teams? How do you help them feel connected when uh, they're on different floors in the same office? How do you help people actually feel a sense of connectedness to each other, which actually then helps them feel connected to the company overall? So the, the way that, uh, you know, and again, that business is all public gatherings. So here we are 18 years after I've started, uh, I started Zog Sports and, you know, seven, six, seven years after I started Zog Culture. And uh, it went from us thinking that we actually may have had another month to kind of go on a Tuesday 
uh, I believe it was uh, Tuesday the 10th of March, to Wednesday thinking that we had two weeks, to Thursday thinking that we had uh, one week, to that Friday, uh, uh, March 13th, when we very quickly realized that public gatherings were not gonna be a thing for the foreseeable future. And we moved very, very quickly and um, basically ceased operations. We furloughed all of our employees. And that move and the speed at which we made that move, um, recognizing what was going on in the world, uh, probably saved our company. It probably saved us, you know, it certainly saved us probably, you know, half a million dollars of cash. And uh, that is probably the thing that is going to get us through until we can actually relaunch and start using our PPP loan and things like that. Um, so I, I know you guys had asked me a couple questions um, uh, that I'll, I'll, do you want me to, uh, Kyle, just kind of go into a couple of questions or that you yeah, already have? Yeah, I want to hear from, from you about some of the challenge. I mean, you mentioned, I mean, quite a few. All right. You're talking about having to scale down from, you know, 100 employees down to almost zero. I mean, that's I mean, how how did you handle those conversations? What do you have an HR person or did you, you know, how, how do you scale? How do you tell someone uh -huh. that they, they, they no longer have a job for the for, for time being? Like, yeah, yeah, sure. How do you go um, about doing so that? here's the way I here's the way I roll. Um, and, and by the way, like I, I've also also been coaching um, like just in, in my spare time. Um I've also been coaching CEOs um, kind of on this kind of thing uh, mm -hmm. because I, I love giving back. Um, so I've kind of made that as a, as a side thing that, that I've been doing. Um, I, it's, it's my job. I'm the CEO. Okay. It was my job. It was not my HR person's job. Yeah. It was my HR jobs person to figure out how to help people apply for unemployment insurance. And figure out how we're going to pay for healthcare insurance. It's my CFO's job to help manage cash, but it's my job to communicate everything. And so um, I had three all hands meetings on successive days, giving them different information because the world had changed. I had an all hands meeting on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And um, again, the the you know back a month. This is we're basically talking a month ago. You know, this is the 11th, 12th, and 13th of March. And uh, I stood up in front of the room and I basically, you know, one of the words you asked me is what's one word? And it was transparency. That's my one word is I felt that it was important for me to tell the my employees, because these are the people who they share a sense of purpose with the company. Right. We follow Simon Sinek's start with why model. Right. We we're all about purpose. Right. And our purpose is all about connections, community and having a sense of play. And these people work not for the company. They work with me to help make our purpose happen into the world. And so I have a responsibility to actually explain to these people exactly what's going on. So the first day I stood up in front of the room and I said, I don't know what's going on, but we're going to we're going to need to make some pretty serious changes and probably, um, you know, kind of shut things down, start working from home, that kind of thing. By the next day, it was, um, you know, we're telling them we probably have a couple of weeks left. Um, some people are going to probably work part time and we're going to figure this out to Friday when I basically told everyone 100 percent of the company is uh, is furloughed and, you know, Everyone, everyone's, you know, the office is closed and, you know, these are the communications we're going to make to our customers. And this is, um, you know, this is, this is the story with, you know, we're going to still cover your health insurance and this is what's going on. And we basically explain the concept uh, of cash management at the company. We explain mm -hmm. that we didn't share every financial detail, but we shared enough so that people understood why we were doing this. Mm -hmm. And they understood because we explained to them. And the number of thank yous that I got afterwards, it, it was amazing. People amazing. coming up, I mean, I, I actually cried during it. Um, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm, um, I, I'm an emotional leader. 
um, kind of by nature. And I've never had a layoff in 18 years. We've grown every single year for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And we've had controlled growth is what I would call it. We've never had outside investment, but we've continued to grow because we've continued to make people happy. That's what we do. Yeah. And so, yeah. That's an amazing story. Um, Rob, what I'm going to do, we have a couple of questions that came in yeah, from the chat. So I, know, I know, Susan, do you mind identifying some of those questions um, for Robert? And um, we can probably have those questions directed um, specifically to Robert to, to answer. If you have any sure. that, that came through, we can, yeah. Yeah, there are some questions that came through around. <laughs> You know, what are you hearing about a date when uh, things will be live and the sort of uh, normal? Is there small live engagements? What what does that look like? We got one of those questions. Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, as I was saying, you know, how the world changed, you know, each of those three days as we were making the decision to furlough all our staff, the world is changing every single day. There had not been one piece of good news about the economy reopening or anything like that until last Saturday, um, you know, five days ago when there was a, uh, a great uh, piece in the New York Times with five bioethicists and economists actually talking about um, the, the ethics of reopening and what happens, wh- 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 which is worse. People dying from COVID-19 versus, uh, a, you know, that might have taken three years off of their life if they're elderly or sickly versus uh, a, a student who's not able, who falls behind because they lose six months of, of education and that affects them adversely for 50 years. So it, there hadn't been a piece of good news that no one was even talking about. Now, five days later, there's been a lot of talk about it. And what I think is that we're not going to know anything for four to six weeks. And I think that it, I think four to six weeks from now is not when we're going to reopen, but that's when we'll know more. There's one other study. Um, uh, an acquaintance of mine is a pharmaceutical executive. And he, um, he, he, he had a, um, a FDA, t- like a clinical trial testing company that he sold. And he told me that, the, and this is actually the best piece of news that I actually have gotten in, since this whole thing started. He told me that there are f- no fewer than 50, five zero clinical trials for treatments for COVID-19 going on around the world. And all of that data is actually being shared. He says, and the reason that it hasn't been public is because they want to under promise and over deliver. Now, um, I don't think that we're getting back to quote normal um, for a year. I think that we're going to reopen in smaller doses because there's going to be fear regardless of whether there's treatments or vaccines or things like that. so that, that was the same thing after 9-11. There was fear. People didn't want to, you know, didn't want to travel, didn't want to go to certain places, didn't want to do certain things. There was fear for years. Um, and so uh, I think there's going to be fear of this disease for years. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it will decline as we come up with treatments and then come up with a vaccine. Now, I, I do think that smaller things are going to reopen and they're going to reopen um, in in unique ways. For example, we will be allowed to go back to restaurants where um, you have to wear a mask into the restaurant and all the servers have to wear masks and all the workers have to wear masks. And uh, by the way, this is my theory. Um, <laughs> and uh, you can only take off your mask to eat, right? Is that something that could happen? For sports, could it happen where we go back to playing certain sports where you have to wear a mask and we only play sports where there's less physical contact like softball and kickball and volleyball um, and things like that, as opposed to soccer and basketball and and like maybe maybe touch football, touch and flag football, where there's a lot more direct physical contact. Yeah, um, I, I, I saw a report where 
social distancing might extend till 2022, which is, you know, when you think about that, you know, you have to you know, reshape your, your whole business model. Uh, yeah, I, forward, I don't, you know. I, I haven't heard that, you know, again, different numbers, different things. Um, I mean, you know, look, this, this thing is scary. Um, but if there are treatments for it and mm -hmm. it's not as scary to get it, then I think people will be less scared. Like if you get the flu, like, look, people die from the flu every year, right? Yeah, but there's true. Tamiflu and there's a flu vaccine, right? Um, and there are all sorts of other, you know, I, I, I don't think that the economy is going to stay shut down without people interacting with each other for, you know, till, two, till 2022. Um, I'm more optimistic than that, but I also don't see us knowing anything for four to six weeks and more likely, you know, another couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good feedback. Uh, Susie, we have, you have another question for us, for, for Robert? Um, I think we could talk to Rob about if there are any routines that he does to maintain focus. Cause we did get a question about stress management and besides exercise, what we could do. And I, I answered about morning routines and evening rituals, but perhaps Rob has some insight there as well. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So I am a big self care advocate. Um, one of the things I was actually going to mention um you know, based on the questions, uh, Kyle, that you sent me in advance was the number one focus of all of us CEOs and, 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 you know, has to be the CEO, right? If we're not okay, the company can't be okay. And then the number two priority is the company. If the company isn't okay, there's no jobs for anyone to have. Right. So it's you and your family first, and then number two is the company, right? And then in my in my book, it's then employees, customers, vendors, right? So um, from a self-care perspective, this has thrown me off my routine. I had an amazing morning routine, right? It was wake up, go to the gym, come back, meditate, you know, and then kind of uh, get on with my day. And while I was at the gym, I was also listening to podcasts, right? So I was learning. And then I would also do a little bit of journaling, right? So I had, and it was tight. It was a tight routine. And this, you know, there's no gym, right? So uh, what I'm doing now is I'm waking up and I'm actually doing uh, kind of a set of, a set of kind of core and lifting exercises that I can do at home. Um, I actually gave myself a challenge, uh, a push-up challenge where uh, I, I basically decided that I want to do a hundred push-ups in a row and I'm up to, I did 91 this morning. Wow. So um, yeah, so I won't flex. I'll, right. I'll do, I'll do you at a nine for you, Robert. Is that okay? Nine? I'll All right. You. All yeah. right. No, you're going to, you're going to be at 20, 20, <laughs> 20 by next week. Um, but um, so I started doing those exercises and then I go meditate. And one of the things that I've actually done to kind of create a little community is there's a great, um, uh, there's a great app called 10% Happier, which is uh, Dan Harris's company, uh, ABC News correspondent, uh, who wrote the book 10% Happier. Is an app called 10% Happier, and there's there's a there's something called 10% uh, Happier Live, which is like a you can you can get it at any time, but you, it's live at three o'clock on the East Coast, and basically it's a an interview, a five minute meditation, and then Q and A. So I've been listening to that as part of my morning routine and then doing like my own self meditation. And then what I've done is I've kind of framed my work day to be this long. And I said, and then when I'm done with my work day, I say, okay, now I'm going to uh, go exercise outside. Right. So um, I'll either go for kind of a walk, kind of run in one of the parks. I live in Manhattan. Um, uh, I ride my bike, um, things like that. Um, and when it's been raining, I've kind of run up and down the stairs of my building. Um, so I'm like kind of giving myself a workout and then I'm in, you know, I've actually started cooking a lot. So that's actually been therapeutic in a way. And so I've been doing that. In the maybe, maybe you and Kevin can share recipes. <laughs> <laughs> I made an amazing brisket, Kevin. I've never made brisket before. It was unbelievable. 
Uh, well, that's awesome. What, what I want to do is I want to just, uh, if 30 seconds, if I want to turn it back to the panel and uh, if each one of you can give one takeaway that you can, you know, one takeaway that someone from this that's attending is watching this webinar. It, it has been recorded, so you may have some folks that have watched it later on. What, what's one takeaway you can leave with the audience? If you can just, you know, share that with everyone in, in, in 30 seconds. And um, Rob, Robert, I'll give you the final, the final crack. Oh, all right. Uh, Kevin? Yeah, I think one thing that we, we made a lot of good points today. One thing that, that I didn't get to touch upon that I'm a big believer in is identifying what people do well. So as a business owner, as a leader, identify what the people in your team do well, what are their strengths, what are what are, that that's gonna be their greatest chance for success and let them utilize that in the work that they're doing. Um, so I think that that's a really important thing to take away as well. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Kevin. Winnie? I would say remain adaptable and lead with heart. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. I love that. Uh, Susan? I would say is you get we get to choose how we want to, to show up, how we want to think, what we put in our bodies to eat, what we choose to do in terms of exercise and with our time and to remember that you're not alone in this process. Mm -hmm. Good point. Robert. Sure. Uh, I'm going to start with patience. I, that is my literally worst virtue. Um, I, I am, we share that same uh, one. I'm, I have little patience as well. I have this. Tough I am, one that, well. I, it, this has been <laughs> the hardest thing for me. The yeah. literally the fact that there is very little that I can, 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 can that I can control. As a matter of fact, there's almost nothing that I can control right now. And trying to be patient with that to me is is the one of the hardest things I've ever dealt with in my life is lack mm -hmm. of control. And as a CEO, as you know, many of the people listening are, it, it is a, uh, that's really tough. It's really tough to kind of be patient. I'll end on, you can only do what you can do and you can only can control what you can, can control. So there are very few things that are within our control right now. And the only two things really within our control are kind of what we do, right? So for example, I was able to apply for the PPP loan, um, you know, to help our company relaunch when we're able to relaunch, right? So it was something I could actively do. Um, I'm working to communicate with my employees, communicate, 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 as um, I think uh, Kevin said. Um, and uh, the, but you can, the other thing you can control is kind of how you bring yourself to work. And kind of how you react to things that are going on. And I will admit that I have reacted very well to certain things and very, very poorly to other things. Mm -hmm. I have had moments of complete despair where um, I, I think, oh, my God, I'm going out of business and I'm moving in with my mother-in-law. Um, <laughs> and I've had days when I think, how can, we, how can, it, how can that be possible when the world is going to need what we do and the entertainment business and restaurants and, and uh, you know, concerts and sports and, you know, is going to need these things to heal and feel right. regain a sense of nerves. Like how, how could it be that, w that these businesses wouldn't be around in higher demands? So control what you can, can, can control. Awesome. Awesome. I want to thank all of you, um, you know, our panelists today, uh, Kevin, Winnie, Susan, and especially you, Robert, for, for joining. I'm mean, just been a really great um, webinar we had. Um, I'm sure the attendees took, took away some good information they can take back to the marketplace, to, to the employees, to the vendors, uh, making sure you're transparent. I love that one because what's going on here is not is nothing to is, we have no control, right, Robert, as far as uh, the virus and the economy. So because control what you can control, if you can control that message to your to your vendors, to your suppliers and the employees and the rest of the management team, uh, that would be my my takeaway. Um, as far as the, the MN Alliance is concerned, we do have some upcoming events. Um, for us, we have scheduled coming up. Uh, the next one is going to be on April 30th. We're going to talk about compliance issues and being prepared for eventual litigation. We have a 
investment seminar coming up and deals to ways to uh, finance deals right now. Um, that's been put off on May 14th. And the recovery and the future, we're going to talk about your contingency plan. Do you have one? If, if so, you might need to get one. Um, so we have uh, speakers lined up uh, for the 30th, the 14th, and the 19th. Uh, I just want to thank everyone um, today in attendance. This re this um, webinar has been recorded and it will be um, disseminated to all the registrants. So you get a chance to uh, review um, the information today from today's webinar. Um, to get in contact with any of the speakers here, um, visit the MA Alliance.com. That's M A as in merger and acquisition alliance.com. Um, all of the speaker bios are listed on that website. And on the event page, if you go to the event page, uh, we're going to put up Rob's information. Rob, you're going to take a few seconds to talk about your your, your charity. And I know you have a, a GoFundMe. You, you want to take a listen? Oh, right, yeah. Seconds to talk about that real yeah, quick? Yeah, sure, sure. Thanks yeah. so much, Kyle. Uh, yeah. Um, we, you know, we're still paying for all of our employees' health insurance and like trying to keep the doors open um, until public gatherings can can begin. And so we set up a GoFundMe page to basically kind of support the, you know, to support the business um, and our ability to relaunch because the, the PPP loan is great, but it's really only helpful for when we can relaunch. And if that's next year, that's it's next year. And so the question is, how do we get from here to when we can actually relaunch? Um, so, yeah, it's just a GoFundMe uh, page and just search for Zog Sports. Um, Thanks, Robert. And uh, it's been great. Thank you so much for uh, bringing that up. Thank you. We, we're going to send out a survey at the end of this, everyone. Um, this will like to get your feedback, and uh, we will send you a follow-up thank you note with information on some of the programs that we have coming up. I know, Susan, you're speaking with the Queen's Chamber, I believe, on May yeah. 6th. And you also have a, a, a program. You want to share a little bit about your REST program before we, before we call it a, a day? Sure. So quickly, REST stands for Resiliency and Empowerment Seminar today. And I am conducting interviews with small to mid-sized businesses as my give back during this time to highlight um, their organizations, their journeys, and how they're being resilient. So you can get in touch with me about that. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Kevin and Wendy, you have any events coming up you want to share? Or any, any valuable information you want to give back um, to our attendees today? Yes, I'm going to be posting it in the uh, in May, uh, the end of this month. I'll definitely be posting it because I have a number of uh, programs I'm working on. We have not pinned a date yet because the logistics are still being worked out, but I will definitely post it on you know on the alliance. Yeah, thank you, Wendy. Uh, Kevin. Yeah, same here. In the in the works, we're we're working on some uh, some webinars coming up, so there'll be more information to share on that soon. Thank you, and uh, thank you all uh, once again. My name is Kyle Griffith, founder of the MA Alliance. I'm also a managing partner of the NYBB Group. We are a merger and acquisitions firm. Um, you can find some information about myself and my company and the services we provide in the MA space on MNAalliance.com. Uh, thank you guys. Have a great day. Please stay COVID free, everyone. Thank you again. All right. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.